playing Grand Theft Auto 3 when it came out, and I was not of age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, but, but I just am old. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. I will be a better parent than mine were. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> magic is complicated. Yes. Right. And a game. I, I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to some people, it, it's not a game. It's serious. Right? It's serious. It's real business. <laughs> <laughs> it is. No, so what's interesting about it and what I keep seeing all the time is people wanting to get into the magic. And they're like, okay, where do I start? How do I play? And it's like, this is not an easy answer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, because like with that, the question's always like, okay, well, what are your friends playing? Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, what format is this? And that, that's really where I wanted to get into. is like format talk, homebrew versus you know, store formats and all the other different things that come up because there's more than one way to play Magic on oh, like yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon. Well, I was just going to say, like, I, I and, and I'm saying this completely ignorant of, of Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon. I'm not in those places. I would imagine a similar thing just on a smaller scale is happening there where there is probably like homebrew formats and stuff like that happening, but it's just not as well known where in Magic it is like a huge part of the game. And I think part of the reason why it does so well, you know, that it, yeah, that and a lot of the game design that's gone into it too. Oh yeah. Cause they've been mindful of not going super power creep, right. Mm -hmm. Where yes, there's cards that come out that break formats cards that are becoming like, Oh my God, we gotta go get that. But you can look back and there's still staples from sets that came out 10, 15, 20 plus years ago. Mm hmm. And those cards have not diminished at all. Like they're still very, very powerful, right? And like, yeah. I think that that that's just on that scope speaks to the design on how Magic's been, where it's not always adding a new layer; it's always adding flavor. Yeah. Look at Yu-Gi-Oh, for example. The big complaint I see from there is they don't ever roll or face out older cards; they just ban things or restrict things. Uh huh. So if you have Yu-Gi-Oh cards from the first set, those are still tournament legal. Wow. So basically they just have a legacy with a evolving ban list. Right. Their their deck size and like how you play the games of course different cuz it's a different game, right? Mm -hmm. I believe it's 3 copies max and then like some restricted are like one copy. Mm -hmm. I think the minimal you have to have in your deck's 40 cards. And I want to say they made the maximum 60. Mm -hmm. There's like a whole story behind that of some dude showing up with like 222 cards and this just wanted to jump in real quick with a correction. The deck actually was 2,222 cards or something like that. That's a lot of cards. Big old, like, almost like pillar-looking type deck box <laughs> that he had of, like, multiple people shuffling, and it was just to shuffle, right? Yeah. He, he didn't play to win. He had, like, every copy of every card he could. <laughs> but after that, because of the way that we played in the tournament, they they made a maximum limit on how many cards you could have in your deck. It's like Battle of Wits, but without the wits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, I think it, it's interesting, though, when you when you take a look back at Magic, though, where you have Historic's kind of newer, and that was Arena started and all that mm -hmm. whatnot, but you still have, like, Legacy. You have all the other older formats as well. Like, you can do weird things as well. They're, I was looking into it on the magic the gathering site mm -hmm. right the official site yeah we're gonna have the formats listed there and to be fair some of these are same format with this way variation mm -hmm. right based on like how many people are playing or whatever do you want to guess how many official formats there are i would have to say north of 30 23 oh wow i overshot i guess i guess i'm probably yeah. including like other formats that that you know we all know about, but you know, like Dan Dan, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, no, no, no. Canadian <laughs> Highlander is not on there, for example. I yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, that, that's variations of different stuff, right? I mean, you have like standard, you have, you know, commander, commander 1v1, you have two headed giant, mm -hmm. like constructed versus limited, and all those other different variations. And it's, it's interesting because wherever, you know, like what set of cards you want to play, it's that like rule restriction, right? Mm hmm. Like, you know, modern, for example, is 8th edition and on with its own band list. Base game rules are the same, though, where it's like, you know, it's still a 60-card deck, four copies other than basic lands. You know, all the other rules still apply with, like, Legends and all that other stuff. And I think that's the part where Magic does it well is, for the most part, the game's consistent on how you play it. Yeah, these are all, like, with few exceptions, really the the differences between the format are almost meta things. 
like deck sizes, cards that are allowed to be played, the, you know, that sort of thing. Obviously, commander and commander variants do add a rule of like the command zone and all of that. But for the most part, the game itself, the function of the game isn't being changed by the format. Um, there's very few exceptions to that in terms of um, different formats across the, you know, right. gamut. Yeah, it's not often. You're, there's a few of them I've seen before and I've played before where, I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one where it's like the, the one massive deck in the middle everyone plays from. Oh, right? uh, yeah, there's, um, is that, is that Gauntlet? No. Is that, that... I don't think it's official. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it might be Battle Box. I think it might be called, or it might be like General. Uh, I know which one you're talking about. And then, well, then, and then there's the one that has has gotten some recent fame uh, from the Ristic Studies video, um, Dan Dan. Uh, that's one that actually operates similar, where you are playing it. You and your opponent are playing from the same deck. And I was fortunate enough earlier this year when I was doing an event at my local game store. We were doing a charity event and they have a Dan Dan deck and we, you know, they were like, do you want to play it? And we're like, yeah. And so the guy, like the resident Dan Dan expert came over and sat down and he played with my buddy Derby first. And then he played with me and it was incredibly fun. Like I was expecting it to be like weird and not, this is kind of odd, but it was very fun. I really enjoyed it. And so, yeah, uh, check out Dan Dan, but that's, that's a, that's another version of that. Well, it's interesting because even in that same fact, like house kind of games like that are good because you don't have to go, okay, well, what's the meta? What do I have to build up to? Mm -hmm. In that same sense, like you have it as equal of a chance in that game with them because you're using the same deck, yeah. right? And and it, what's interesting about it, and this is part of the reason why I like Magic because there are so many different ways that you can play this game or you can even just engage with the game. And, and, and like going back to what you were saying at the top of the episode where you were saying about how like when somebody says, hey, I, I want to get into magic, how do I do that? And, and it's like, well, I have some follow up questions. <laughs> While that is a, a bit of a downside to magic being as elaborate as it is, I do think that that's one of its strengths overall, because once you get the person through the door. Like once you get them through the door and into the space, they will find a way to play or a way to interact with the game that speaks to them. That's most people like, you know, there are going to be some people where you show it to their, their eyes glaze over and they're like, OK, yeah, this is kind of fun. But for a lot of people, it's just finding that that one little bit of, of magic that could just pulls them in, you know. Right. The, the big thing there, too, is how people start and where they start. Mm -hmm. I think. For the most part, most people start with what we would call casual magic, <laughs> table magic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where band lists don't exist, <laughs> yep. right? Yep. Uh, the, your buddy comes in with that, you know, pre-constructed deck that's definitely not legal in the format that you're supposed to be playing, uh -huh. but you still let him do it, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of those learning curves are going through, and we've talked about it before, too, where like, how do you start somebody, right? Like mm -hmm. the complication of magic itself, you don't want to be giving someone a you know, a Delver deck and saying, okay, well, you're going to learn this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Here, play Storm. <laughs> you know, it's like, where you, you brought something notepad. to count with. <laughs> exactly. Well, that, well that, that's, it's interesting you say that because um, I played as a kid, you know, I, I played very early on and then I stopped because life. And then I went to college and met some folks, started playing again. After college, it took a little break, very short break, uh, where I moved down here to where I live now in Virginia. And a, a soon after that, it was, oh, I would say it was probably a span of maybe a year, two years, where I met my buddy Derby, who I've mentioned before. And uh, one night he was said, oh, I got to leave um, after rehearsal. I'm going over to my buddy's place. We're going to play some cards. And I'm thinking like, oh, what do you play? Poker, blackjack? Like, what do you play? And he was like, magic. And I was like, okay, uh, uh, can I go get my decks? <laughs> and and uh, he 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 was like, oh yeah, come on. And so we uh, went over to his uh, to our buddy's place and started playing. And it, that was all she wrote. And we've been playing for God over tw almost twenty years now. Sweet Jesus. Um, <laughs> but 
Oh, God, I am old, dear listeners. Um, at least I feel it. But the but the reason why I bring that up is because that that group of friends that I started to play with, they were the ones that I credit with leveling me up as a player because well i wasn't necessarily coming like coming to game nights with like a uh, hundred hundred card deck being like you know this was before commander um but i wasn't coming with like a hundred card deck like oh i got five color good stuff you know like i did when i was a kid i was i you know had gotten i had realized like okay yeah no i really should have a 60 card deck i really should you know but they were the ones that you know got me to understand uh, more deck building strategies and all that kind of stuff and that's great but they had what they didn't realize was really house rules in terms of ban lists and proxies and all that kind of stuff that they thought was just what everybody did like i remember our ban list i don't know what they based it off of but they, they like they based it off what some idea of their ban list like cuz we're talking about we were well into the age of vintage legacy standard you know like we we were well into that time and I would pull out a card and they'd be like, oh, no, that card's banned. And they weren't doing it to be jerks. Like, you can't play that. They were saying, like, no, that's a super powerful card and it has been banned. And I would look into it and it like, well, yeah, it was banned in standard when it was in standard. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> that kind of stuff. But it's fine in Legacy. So eventually there was one day where I came in. We'd been playing for a couple of years. And finally I came in and I said, OK, guys, this is the ban list website here are the formats you got to pick which one because i'm tired of guessing which ban list you guys are referring to every time you say a card is banned you know it, it, it's interesting because like i think back to when i was playing in college because that's like i was really like cutting my teeth on magic mm -hmm. and like the idea of a ban list never even crossed my mind or like you know building to a format and all that other stuff because it's just you know you old collections from people and you just build a deck right like the you know, you hear to the deck building rules of like, you know, the four copies and all that other stuff. You're playing the game normal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of those older three white border cards, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, some with like their own little mold spots, right? Yeah, that uh -huh. Like I remember buying, the uh, I don't remember the name of the deck, but it was the black uh, resurrection deck that they like actually like shipped out. It was all foil and, you know, curled worse than a can of Pringles, right? <laughs> yep. But they had mm -hmm. like Entomb and Dread Return in there. Uh -huh. I remember playing those, and then later on finding out, oh yeah, half this deck's not even legal. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> why'd you why'd you sell it, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. When you're building decks, like how you play, like I I really got into modern. And modern's where my brain runs because like I know most of the, the I wouldn't say staples, but like it's like oh hey, Lana War Elves, Elvish Mystic, right? Like you know the the good cards you put in every deck where it's that slot, right? Yeah. With that, and then like getting into edh commander because mm -hmm. like that wasn't big yet either back then yeah oh yeah i i specifically remember buying the the commander decks that had come out like a couple of them mm -hmm. and that was the first time they ever released a commander deck yeah hopefully you still have those because they're worth a lot oh no no i don't <laughs> oh you know yeah yeah You're like oh no <laughs> those are so no, long time no ago. i <laughs> yeah no uh, unfortunately like back when i stopped playing after college pretty much got rid of my entire collection other than two decks um, oh yeah that's right but, i remember you telling me that yeah so you've, you've played against one of them uh and that was like i was just playing the first time by a land destruction deck which is great against tron um oh yeah <laughs> as as we saw <laughs> <laughs> even then like thinking about it like there's a lot of different like formats and things you can do too like we're talking about house rules and like i think that's a big piece especially when we're talking about commander because mm -hmm. that's what everyone's playing nowadays and that seems to have the most house rules because beyond it being the game of magic, it's also a very political game. Like you were talking about like ban list and house mm -hmm. ban list. Like mm -hmm. if anyone here's watched the uh, MTG Go Fish uh, streams that they've done or the their the commander games, they mm -hmm. have our own house ban list, right? Like they're not allowed to play Soul Ring and these other cards as well because like they just take the fun out of the game. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up because they just made the announcement either today or yesterday as of data recording that they added the one ring to the list because of how it just just made games not fun, you know, for them. And I thought that was interesting. Like I think I think that is really interesting to to have that, you know. And I think that it's something that it's it's fun to have, but you also have to be careful with it because 
if you're doing a ban list, you know, for your for your house rules, you want to avoid that player likes to play control or that player likes to play land destruction or that player likes to play this. We're going to ban everything to make it suck for them. You know, you don't want right, to do right. that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, as a general rule of thumb for people out there too, like, especially if it's your group of friends, right? We're not talking like LGS pods because that's typically just game rules. And unless you're buddies with the people there and you can have those conversations, but this is, you know, kitchen table magic, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where if you're going to house ban something, it needs to be unanimous and people need to come to an agreement saying, yes, yes, that's not fun to play against. And it not picking on somebody when that's like the bread and butter of their deck. Like, yeah. you're going, oh, hey, we're going to ban Regavan. And like only Nate plays Regavan. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, exactly. Like, or, you know, they, they come in and ban whatever other card it may be. Like, uh, a Cyclonic Rift being a big one that people don't like, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, only one person in the entire pod plays blue. And I wonder who that's targeted for. Exactly. Right? Like, exactly. Don't, don't be, I mean, as a player too, you want to not get people to hate when you play things. And there mm-hmm. are cards out there that are just that powerful that as soon as they see them, people get out their salt shakers. Oh, yeah. Like apparently the one ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The one ring is one of them. When we think of house rules, there's some other formats i've seen out there right and like p- people need to keep in mind commander isn't a wizard's game yeah right mm-hmm. it it was created by people mm-hmm. and you know rest in peace sheldon yeah i was just but, about to say but uh for our listeners we're recording this three days after sheldon Minery died so yeah very sad day for magic so rest in peace sheldon but you know the this was the 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 child the love of a group of people mm-hmm who loved playing magic and wanted to do something just a little different, right? Like mm-hmm. the, the idea of it being singleton, the idea of you having that, that one creature that you can keep bringing them back, right? They're, mm-hmm. they're leading the charge and that whole synergy of building around their effect. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I guess all the extra rules and all the other things that go into it. There's, there's so much love that goes into this and magic's very open to letting mm-hmm. you take the game and just kind of, mess with it a little bit right there was a a video i haven't watched but i've seen it pushed to me on youtube um one of the bigger channels did it where they they did a game where all the cards cost no mana right oh (laughs) jeez and like how how bad that got like you're you're allowed Uh to say hey we're gonna we're gonna do something crazy oh yeah we're gonna try this there was a shuffle up and play where they they brought on the uh treasure cruise kind of deck Mm mm-hmm and like being able to add like that extra flavor into the game, right? Or other episodes where they, you know, monarch in the middle, like, where you're you're not necessarily changing the game entirely, but you're saying, hey, we're gonna add some flair. If you want to like, treasure cruise works similar to like a plane chase almost in that regard, where you get to roll and see if you get good or bad or how many cards you want to get or however it be, right? You dump the mana in, you roll a die, and then you go with it. You get either a curse. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Or you get a good artifact, and like yep. you, it speeds the game, and it does weird things, right? And same thing with Plane Chase, and that was that was a Wizards product. Granted, that that was the whole idea of that. We're, we're introducing something slightly different. Same thing with the, the conspiracy sets, right? Mm-hmm. And being able to do things that are almost unset-ish, but not quite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They like tow that line, or and even the Infinity, the unsets themselves. I think is an excellent is an excellent example of of a a very interesting way to take magic, also a very polarizing way to take magic. But yeah, um, yeah, I still don't I still don't understand why they opted for acorn icons rather than just silver border those cards. I I think it probably had to do with the cost of of having half the run be silver border and half the run be black border. There probably was I mean, a cost associated with that that they didn't want to go with, so they just decided to do them all black border and then acorn them. Yeah, I mean, yes, and given how bad they are at some of their cut jobs, I can see that. Yeah. Um, but also, at the same time, it, it costs them just as much to print anything else. Yeah, fair. Like, well, I think Infinity is is probably going to be one of the the sad points for me in terms of magic because it's one of those sets that 
I I like I really like Infinity. Like I I like their I, I like the bits of Infinity, and I think it would have been more it would have been better re- received if they had just kept it Silver Border, if they had just done Silver Border. Like I I understand right. that there's the the. I understand where where Mark Rosewater is coming from, and he said multiple times on his podcast and in interviews and such that that one of the things that has always bugged him about Silver Border is that that there is this belief that they aren't real magic cards because they're not tournament legal, they're not real, and that bothers him. And I can understand it because it kind of bugs me too. Like I I, I like Infinity. And I dislike how there's this like stigma attached to them. And the stigma right. is so attached to them that even the commander rules committee has banned all uncards, like all silver border. They're banned. They're not allowed in commander. And that and that there, I think, is what sent Mark Rosewater over the edge. Because he's he's gone on record to say that he disagrees with that. He said, these are casual cards. Commander is a casual format. Why the hell? Aren't they allowed? Now, obviously, the Commander Rules Committee's response has always been, you just house rules them in. You just allow them to be played. But one thing Mark Rosewater understands, and something that I think a lot of us understand, and even the Commander Rules Committee to some extent, is you can say that till you're blue in the face. House rules them into your situation. But what that does is that makes them much less likely to be allowed because they're on the ban list. I think it from the the committee perspective though as well do you mm. really want to have to sit through there and go over every single one of those cards and say is this fair play mm-hmm. because blanket statement silver border is much easier because i mean like what percentage of infinity was acorned right because mm-hmm. those cards were weird yeah they, they had you doing things outside of the game or had you doing weird things and like the fact that the sticker cards still made it in baffles me every time i think of like the original unsets i think of like avatar of me right where like your physical characteristics affect that or the uh like ashnaut's coupon or whatever that card is people keep posting to reddit where it says like someone has to go buy you a beer yeah <laughs> like okay really <laughs> yeah well except but except uh, fair. it has been eroded to say that you you uh, uh owe any costs uh associated with the yeah, purchase of the drink <laughs> there's that other on card where it says you ignore all rat attacks fair fair it's like that's the combo i keep seeing people posting on reddit it's like if i play this what happens <laughs> yeah exactly it's like <laughs> you get ejected because those aren't legal um Right. But I like and the thing is is that I can see it from both sides. Like I can see like like really I don't I don't think it would have been that big of a big of a chore for them to go through the end sets because really we're talking about um un, unhinged, unglued and and unstable. You know, the like those first two sets, it would be pretty easy to just go through and just be like, okay, fair, fair, unfair, unfair, weird, you know, that kind of thing. Um, sexual harassment in in you know, <laughs> this 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 uh, this card is going to cause problems with lawyers involved. So yeah, let's get rid of that. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, but unstable, like unstable, would be fairly easy, I think, to go through. Well, I think the the problem then. is is that it's just they know so many people don't want to play it, <laughs> you know. But I don't know. I just I just have a special place in my heart for Infinity and or uh, for for Unsets and Infinity like was like, oh, it was such a good idea. And they whiffed on so many parts of it. I mean, to their credit and leaving Infinity and Unsets after this, but like the the unsanctioned box did a good job of bringing those together as something you can Mm -hmm. play as its own individual Mm -hmm. magic game that's separate right yeah and you can usually still find them on clearance racks in stores because oh yeah oh yeah Um, yeah i think you can get it on amazon for like 30 bucks right and i think it if you want to mess with uncards i think that's the one to go with Mm -hmm. because it at least has the different halves of decks and the different things you could do and it has the you know the front half of a creature and the back half of a creature whole thing in there too right yeah the the infinity the big thing that they did with it and the reason why they did it besides them being like well we want uncards in commander and mm-hmm. eternal formats or whatever is they wanted a product that people will actually buy yeah. which is also why they put those freaking lands in it 
I, those are the only cards that had value in that entire set. Fair. Very fair. I will say, though, that this is one thing that they've done in in the unsets that I wish they would do in the regular sets, and that is in the unsets, every pack... Now, I know, I know Infinity is slightly different in the fact that you could get a Shockland, and that was kind of like a, a bonus chase card, but every pack, at the very least, had a full art land in it. Mm-hmm. And so even if you didn't get anything you wanted in your pack. You knew you were getting that pretty full art land. And that to me makes those packs a little bit more worth it in my opinion. Whereas like in Eldrain and wilds of Eldrain that just came out and in brothers war and in, you know, all the, then uh, all will be one. It really annoyed me and all will be one because I liked those Phyrexian lands, the, the, uh, the, the, the ones that had the Phyrexian symbol on them. The it really annoyed me that they weren't in every pack because now I have all these other lands that I have zero interest in, both the regular, <laughs> um, the regular full art lands that had like Frexianization going on in the background, and, and you know, like all that other stuff going on in those sets. And I, I'm like, I just want the full art lands, just put the full art lands in all of the packs, everybody will be happy, but they don't do that, and that annoys me. You know, it's a kind of a sad thing that we, we chase land art now too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, oh uh, yeah. It's 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 we've gone beyond the pale. You know, <laughs> the, the the funny thing, and the, I know you and I are on opposite sides of this. I like having all unique, different arts in my decks. <laughs> so, like, I love these full art lands, right? I love mm-hmm. getting these all these different things that are going on and it's funny because like, I'll, I'll pull up a deck and i'll look at the land base in it and it's like oh i built this around that time frame because it's whatever lands i was getting that were cooler at the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's like looking at like sediment lines <laughs> oh yeah like, yeah it's like oh there was a volcano with some time around here <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's like ooh, i built this deck in during during the mirrodin era um <laughs> <laughs> or you know you're talking about your uh um your dash deck the other yeah, day yeah and, and the fact that it was since it was only single sleeved i was like oh this was before i hit my my double sleeve period <laughs> we're about to enter the triple now, sleeve I, I think circling back though onto when we're talking about magic and formats i i do think getting creative with it having fun with your friends is always a good thing to do right mm-hmm. try it if you can try making a treasure cruise deck right mm-hmm. um doing those kinds of little fun things you know Play plain chase one is not what the decks are built to do, right? Just yeah. bust out those cards, give it a try. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it it adds so much more different flavor into the game. That's kind of like the whole literally chaos to it, right? Yeah. the The other big thing to consider though is you're you're not having to say, "Hey, I'm going to build to a meta. I'm going to build to this thing." And that's that's to the level where I like playing mm-hmm. Magic is I'm going to build something to do something fun, something weird, something cool. Mm-hmm. There's like that kitchen table type magic where, yes, it'll be nice if I win, right? Uh-huh. And the deck should, but it's not, we're not playing, you know, green Tron. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're playing, you know, Tron with flavor of other things, right? Uh-huh. Um, and that, I have way too many Tron decks. People. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, I don't even know how many there are. I, Offhand, I probably have at least more than four. Um, <laughs> well, and well, that's like, no, to, to piggyback um, off what you were saying about trying new things. Is I have like one one of the things I love to do, especially with sets that are very unique. And so far, I've done it with Infinity, and I've I've I'm almost done doing it for Lord of the Rings. I've I've built essentially the archetype decks where I take the the archetypes from the limited environment and I take cards from that set and build a 60 card version of that uh mm-hmm. and then I make a battle box out of it and that way I kind of encapsulate the in some ways the limited environment not not exactly but kind of close um as well as 
the the set itself like i'm able to get it where i can i can play the set again and this is also what cubes are we haven't even touched on cubes which is another format or really a genre of format where you can recreate a limited environment or create a whole new limited environment you like this is where you can do set design and it, you know it's just it's all of these things are fun to try you know it's very similar to the block right mm -hmm. and how people used to do those and for people that aren't aware so like back in the old days of magic <laughs> uh they used to stay on the same plane for a couple sets yep so like for example you know ravnica that was visited a few times they do three sets on ravnica in a row mm -hmm. and you'd have story spanning the three of them mm -hmm. i know one of the the ones that people love to do was kamigawa right mm -hmm. and dominaria was the other and like when in the theme of it you say okay well i have ravnica and then i have more ravnica why don't i just do a cube or block of ravnica mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and being able to say hey it's it's on that theme right and having games that are based like that or having decks that you build like that and i've seen people talk about building like edh decks that are you know ravnica specific or guild specific right mm -hmm. people love their guilds but oh yeah we've been we... into that theme or you know tarkir only right oh, yeah well yeah yeah like they're like we we um i don't think we've even touched on set constructed block constructed like these were and still are i'm sure in various areas are still formats that thrive you know people who who like you know i want to i want to play original ravnica block constructed where i'm it's not none of the cards from the newer ravnica sets i just want to build a 60 card deck out of cards from the original ravnica block and that's and then we have have some play some games you know um same you know in and all that kind of stuff yeah people like there and and that's and again i just go back to like that's one of the great things about magic is that there's so much you can do with it that it you know we like we we haven't even covered we've talked about a ton of different formats in the you know 45 half an hour 45 minutes we've been talking and we haven't even scratched the surface no of what Not you can There's do so with much magic. more so much so much more like the fact that like they did battle bonds to actually support two headed giant right yeah like yeah. <laughs> i love two headed giant <laughs> the game is so bad yeah but no like <laughs> the i think to, to kind of roll it back on to talking about house rules and custom ways to play though too right the, the last bit i kind of really want to touch on is when you're when you're playing the game mulligans and things like that right mm -hmm. like there's a lot of different ways especially for commander that people are like hey i hate shuffling <laughs> yeah you no know, we're gonna we're gonna you know mulligan a special way or people out there always try the whoever goes last starts monarch or they get to scry one for every position after so like if you go second you scry one if you go third you scry two and so on right trying to like mm -hmm. even it out and find a balance for their play group like you're allowed to do that, right? Like yeah. that's as, as long, long as you guys all agree. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to say, as long as everybody's on board, go for it. You know, it, it, like now you are going to run into the situations where everybody except one person is going to be on board. And it might even be a situation where you're like, Hey, free Mulligan. And there's one person who's like, no, I'm not doing that. Or like, Hey, proxies <laughs> up, up to 15 proxies. No, I will never do proxies. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, and I mean, people are passionate and like, yeah. I get it from different perspectives and like, yeah. but there's a time and place for that, right? Like if you're in an LGS and you're doing your thing and it's serious business, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's not a game anymore. We're serious. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, follow the rules, you know, play, play fair, play correct. Um, even then, like if you're casually, like, you know, a lot of places hold casual commander night. As long as the people you're playing with are fine with it and your proxies are legible, most people don't care, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, on the flip side, if it's even further away and you're not an LGS and you're with your buddies, as long as you guys are having fun, it's mm -hmm. no one else's business. Exactly. And that's the thing. Like, there's, I think that's one of the, this is, uh, kind of in tandem with the what I love about magic is how it, there's so much to it is there's no right way to play as well, long there there is a right way to play <laughs> well like but, but what I mean is 
like yeah, like it's following the rules. But 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 what I mean is there's there's no better yet there's no wrong way to play there is no there is no way that if if you and your friends are having fun and somebody comes in and says you're doing it wrong no you're not you and your friends are having fun with magic cards done you know if people actually were really watching the footage of us playing this game they would be saying that to us too (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah i'm sure in the comments they're like you're doing it wrong it's like, yeah, I know. That's why I'm having fun. How many? Um, <laughs> how many times I sorcery speed instant spells and whatnot <laughs> yeah. and oh, miss triggers and yeah, I I remember getting so serious into the game where it's like that meta mindset of like, okay, I need to know like that's in their hand. Like this person likes putting their lands on the left, so if I'm going to pick a card, I need to pick from the middle or the right side for them to discard, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's I don't like getting that big brain into it anymore. Just be honest. Yeah. I, um, yeah, that 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 kind of plays for me. I'm, you know, it's funny. My my the folks I'm going to MagicCon Vegas with, they were like, "You're gonna do the main event," and I'm like, "Hell no!" <laughs> you know, it's like you all can do it. You all have fun. You the Humbros, you rock it. You kick ass. You get as far as you possibly can. I will play the goofy chaos collector sealed events and the unknown events and the whatever events to have fun because. I don't want to get that serious about my magic. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, and to be fair, if there wasn't people like us, Nate, who else would people be? Right. Oh yeah. Ex- oh yeah. That's, that's what I always say. I was, you know, I'd be like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I, somebody asked me why I go to draft every week. And I said, because I got to give the kids some, I got to give the kids a win. Like the kids need to get to the brand new kids who walk in, never played a game before. I got to <laughs> give them somebody to beat. You know? <laughs> I have no delusions. I would, I, would, I would almost call you a martyr, but not quite. <laughs> no, no. I'm like a martyr who's happy about it. Like, yeah, we, you know. Uh, yes, take my lunch money. Exactly. <laughs> and they're still doing it. And I'm in my 40s and they're still doing it. But I mean, seriously, though, because like at, at, at the end, like they, they, they have fun. They associate that with, you know, having about the game. They want mm-hmm. to play more. They'll get better at the game, right? Yeah. Like, it's, oh, yeah. you get to play, you get to goof off, they exactly. get to have fun, they get to learn. It's overall still positive, as oh, long yeah. as you're not, like, you know, attacking into their little mog with all of your elves, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, and that's the thing. Like, I have, I'll contrast, I talked about the, um, I talked about the game where I was playing Ulamog as my commander, and, and I got, I got targeted and, and all of that. I'll contrast that to the previous game that I played in the previous commander masters event that I was in. And I, that was the one I was playing with my buddy. It was the last game that my buddy and I were going to play before he had to move. Um, and, um, and we were playing with a, with another uh, LGS regular who's a judge, really great guy. And I was getting just my ass handed to me. Like I was just losing like crazy and i was having so much flipping fun we were laughing our asses off the entire game because of just how silly it was getting and it was probably one of my favorite games that i have played in the last couple of years if i'm going to be honest and it was just a lot of fun and i was losing i didn't i i lost like my buddy did a mercy kill on me at the, at the eventually near the end of that game cuz he was like wow yeah you need to go to the bathroom All right, i'm kill you so you could just go um like <laughs> it was just one of those things but we had a blast and that and i think that's i think that's the key to all the formats and the house rules and everything do what you want to do and as long as everybody you're playing with is cool with it and they're having fun and you're having fun you can't go wrong And that about does it for today's discussion on Beyond the Deck Box, where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. You can find us each week on the YouTube channel FDSMTG, or you can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. Just look for Beyond the Deck Box. You can find DM Dingo on Twitch, or you can find him on the FDSMTG Discord, link in the description. You can find me, FDSMTG, on YouTube, or at FDS underscore MTG on threads, or on Mastodon, kind.social. Thank you so much for tuning in and you all have a wonderful day.